Well, all right, guys, so this project has not gone exactly how I planned. <laughs> I was going for a sphere at first, and I kind of was like, oh, well, it's not going to be perfect, you know, whatever. So I decided to cut it off, and, uh, and I ran into problems right there. It was way too thick in the middle, and when I flipped it 90 degrees, I had to take off a ton of material just to get to that nib that was on the end. And I just didn't really think about that, you know, so uh, I've been trying to kind of get this spherical and at this point, it's just a lumpy, bumpy mess. Uh, and I just kind of threw in the towel on turning it. It was really chippy. I was, it was getting to the point where I wasn't really having fun turning it. And I decided to just pull out some sandpaper. We're going to polish it up as it is. And I'm actually all right with that. You know, um, some people may think that that was kind of, you know, quitting or something like that. And it was. Uh, but the pr truth is I just don't have enough time right now to, you know, make this perfect. Uh, and down the road, I could come back, you know, mount it up here and, and try again. That's not a big deal, but I want to get this thing, you know, finished up. I want to see what's going on on the inside. That's more important to me than a perfect sphere, basically. So I'm just going to go through and sand it right now. It's up to 80 grit. Uh, and I've been kind of sanding it, just smoothing things out. <laughs> it's pretty... It's pretty sad. So uh, I, I welcome any jokes or anything like that down in the comments. Try not to be mean. You know, I, I've just kind of at this point, the best thing for me to do is to just, you know, polish this up, see how it looks down the road. I can revisit this if I really want to and, and, and try to get this thing perfected. One of the other reasons I'm not really not going to go any further with that is <laughs> it's just going to get smaller and smaller. And I'd like to see how it looks right now. Uh, I may be happy with it, you know, and frankly, I, I even though it is kind of funny, it is a little bit of a failure and a little bit disappointing, but I actually think it's kind of cool. Now, if you ever need to make a non-spherical bumpy mess, this is exactly how to do it. You got this in the video. So let's see how this thing turns out. Before we begin, I just wanted to thank my two newest top level patrons over on Patreon, Steve Wolgamuth and Gene Ilton. Really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for the support and at the top level. If you'd like to help support the show over on Patreon, you can do so over at patreon.com slash envywoodworks. Now back to the video.
All right, guys, we got it all finished up, and it turned out pretty decent, even though it's definitely not spherical. Now, you guys saw how out of round it was on the lathe, and I mean, realistically, yes, I can tell that there's a little bit of lumpiness, but uh, when you get it all polished up, it doesn't look you know, it's not obviously out of round holding it, you know, a few feet from your face. So uh, I just wanted to kind of show that. Now, that is not the reason I kind of quit early because I wanted to, you know, not, I wanted to preserve material and I was rushing. So uh, I wanted to kind of get this thing done, but I want to show this. Uh, I think it's good to show it because I got a lot of comments on Instagram and, and Facebook. Uh, I posted that it was kind of lumpy and not perfectly round. I knew it wasn't going to be, I wasn't shooting for perfectly round. I wanted to get this project done. Uh, however, in the end, it still looks good. You know, you don't have to get it dead perfect, especially on things like this. You know, once you've gotten it polished up, I mean, really, you hold it a foot away and it's not obvious that it's not perfect. Uh, I think it looks kind of cool and I'm pretty happy with this overall. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed with was uh, during the casting, somehow the, the resin hitting, you know, bonding with the resin, the raisin guy, <laughs> resin, raisin, uh, it, it I, some kind of weird issue happened with that and there's shiny spots all over him so that was a little bit disappointing but overall I'm pretty happy with this thing one other thing I wanted to mention is I actually tried out something that uh, Ben over at Ben's Works does uh, I tried using uh, automotive polish as kind of a final step on this I didn't get video of it I was just kind of messing around trying different stuff but uh, really happy with the shine that you get from pla uh, not plastic polish but it was automotive polish I think that uh, compared to some of the other things that have waxes and uh, like oils in them I think either plastic polish or even just a car polish is a better way to go because you don't have this residue on it. It's it's kind of nice. So uh, might be something to think about. Now, I'm not using a car wax. It's, it's Meguiar's 105. Uh, it's kind of a buffing compound. Uh, but I didn't really show a lot of it because I'm going to do some videos. I want to investigate a little bit more. I got some different buffing wheels that are finer, uh, like softer buffing wheels. And I want to do a little bit of testing before I really kind of show anything. But I did want to mention that plastic, or not plastic, I keep saying that, uh, car polish isn't a bad way to go it really brought out a nice shine now there are still a few little minor flaws that i can see a couple scratches here and there uh, and i and i want to reiterate that you know regardless of what you do i think the the real key to getting a really perfect flawless finish on any resin uh you know art piece turning piece or whatever uh, you have to sand properly. You have to do a lot of sanding. It's it's that's the one drawback I'd say to resin cast projects. The sanding is is key, and and you really have to make sure that you've gotten all of the the previous grit scratches out before moving on, uh, which is difficult, and you may not realize or or find out until you've kind of gotten it you know finished. Uh, where you might see some stuff. You may have to go back and kind of, you know, hit a few spots, go up through the grits. But it's really important to do a very diligent job with your sanding. Use water. Um, clean off the surface between each grit. I'm, I'm just, you know, I've been doing this for a while and I, and I still keep finding out, you know, like little things that you really, really help to get you good results. And I just wanted to kind of mention that. Um, I was really diligent about sanding and this finish is pretty flawless, you know, minus a few little kind of hair, hair, hairline scratch things that I can get out if I go back with uh, probably... I don't know, a pretty high grit, like 4,000 or something like that. Just kind of sand it out and then repolish it. And I think I should be able to get this thing dead perfect. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Um, I'll be interested to hear from people uh, about, you know, me kind of not really doing a very good job on the turning part. You know, a lot of people think that I'm like a really good turner. And to be honest, I'm, I'm just pretty much average. You know, I think one of the things that really helps, especially with projects like this, is the, the negative rate carbide tools make things a little bit easier. You don't really have to worry about, you know, perfect technique all the time with that. So they can kind of help out, get you through it. But I mean, you know, if you're scraping, you can kind of get through any project, you know, and I hope that other people out there, you know, instead of, don't be too afraid of a project. You know, you can do it. Try it out. And uh, even if you don't get it perfect, you're still probably going to be pretty happy with the result. Even if you know there's flaws, other people probably won't even point them out. 
So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, we do all kinds of resin casting projects, tips and tricks, and experiments around here. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when new videos get posted. And if you're thinking about getting into resin casting, but you're not really sure where to begin, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all those beginner questions, you know, like what do I need to get started? How does it all work? It'll help you get over that initial learning curve so you can in your shop and start making some projects like this on your own. It's available on my website if you're interested. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting.